Welcome to CJ420 Criminal Investigation. We start today with lesson one on how we solve crimes. An investigation usually begins in one of several different ways. One of the first ways is that a victim or a witness to a crime will call the police. A uniformed officer will respond. The officer then begins collecting evidence. Detectives may be called to come in and continue the investigation beyond the scope of the officer's ability at that point in time. An officer may come upon a crime in progress. While on routine patrol, they discover a crime. Again, they stop the crime. Usually an investigation like this is pretty short because you have the perpetrator, the person who's committed the crime, and you have all the evidence right there. Uh, ar arrest is usually made, and that's the end of it. However, it may not go that easy. It may be that an officer on patrol finds an open door to a business, and upon discovery, uh, finds out that the there's been a, a burglary, that there are items missing, and then our investigation would begin from that point. Confidential informants, people who uh, are in and sometimes uh, out of the criminal element, or a concerned citizen may contact the police and give them information. When this normally happens, the investigation begins by corroborating those facts, looking up those known things that they can identify. For example, with an anonymous call from a concerned citizen, that uh, drugs are being sold at a particular house. Well, they first they can check to see if that house even exists. If the people that were named actually live there, uh, there may be some other information that they can gather that will help corroborate those facts. The more facts that can be corroborated, the more likely that the information provided is true, and that will give more likelihood to the solvability of the crime. Surveillance of suspicious persons. Uh, again, this may come from somebody who is a concerned citizen, from a criminal informant, or just somebody in the community that seems to have the attention of law enforcement, uh, people in high crime areas, Example, uh, drug dealers hanging out on certain street corners or whatever, cars coming by, they'll approach the car to make a drug sale. Uh, prostitution, uh, prostitutes in a certain area where, again, a person will drive up, try to make a, a transaction with the prostitute. Sometimes it's previously identified persons, people who have been arrested for this crime before. And again, we start our investigation from that point. Undercover officers are usually involved in vice operations where they'll put an officer into an area to kind of infiltrate the criminal community, act like a criminal, act like a, a citizen, the person who likes to party a little bit, looking for something a little bit harder than alcohol, what kind of drugs do you have? Also, sting operations, where uh, the undercover officer shows an interest in purchasing stolen property or uh, buying something illegal. And, and again, uh, getting the trust of the people. A lot of times in these types of operations, these are usually high-level operations, and the likelihood of success depends upon some back information, usually again from a, a criminal informant who has introduced the undercover officer into the community. Most criminal elements have a very high trust among themselves and no trust of people outside their, their circle. So the idea is how do we get somebody in and the best way is through introductions. Other investigative methods, uh, wiretaps in very high profile cases, especially uh, 
those involving espionage, use wiretaps. This is where you're actually listening in to conversations of people. Uh, you hear a lot about this on the news, but the, the bottom line on this is that wiretaps are only authorized for certain crimes. The investigator must show that normal investigative methods have either failed or were likely to fail or get someone hurt. And when the intercept is approved, it's limited to criminal conversations. I have set on wiretaps before when the telephone rings and you're listening in and it's a personal conversation, you have to do what's called minimization procedures. You have to turn that conversation off. Now, after a few minutes, you can turn it back on to see if it's still a personal conversation. If it is, you must minimize again. All of this has to be highly documented. It's a very time-consuming, lengthy process, but it does result in some excellent evidence Again, I've sat on a couple of cases where we've, we've gotten some great information on uh, drug trafficking across the United States, uh, auto theft operations. Uh, one case, we took down seven uh, auto theft rings at one time based upon one 60-day wiretap. Grand jury powers. The grand jury has the power to authorize non-intrusive things such as a request for records you can go to the grand jury to get telephone records uh, bank records certain corporate records the grand jury can call witnesses in and ask them for information and even the grand jury can do non-intrusive requests i had a case one time back before dna was very popular I had a case where I had a suspect where I had a ski mask used in a robbery. I had hair in that ski mask. I wanted to get hair off of his head to compare. The uh, We used the grand jury. The grand jury called him in, asked him for a hair sample, and we got that hair sample and was able to match the hair in the mask to his head. Search warrants are kind of the end of the line. A, well, I say end of the line, I guess the, the wiretaps are probably more end of the line than a search warrant because a wiretap is actually getting like a super search warrant. But search warrants are, as all searches in the United States are governed by the Fourth Amendment, must meet a standard of probable cause, and you must state with particularity where you're going to be searching and what you're going to be searching Four, a lot of these other methods need no suspicion or no proof of facts in order to gain anything. Let me back up for just one to that last slide that we talked about on grand jury. Grand jury information can be gained on basically, uh, since it's not intrusive, uh, requesting the information, convincing the U.S. attorney or the, the state prosecutor that you have a suspicion that this evidence may prove useful in a case.